Godfrey Mapper. Yeah. And I agree with you. And as you said, our main man on the desk, Prof, I think we're going to get all three. Name a uh, more iconic duo than Map 3 Inferno games in CS. Seriously, I don't think you can. Map 3 Inferno is like the thing because every team's okay playing it. So it always ends up coming down to Inferno at the end. It does, it does. But we have to start at the beginning. Chapter one of our series here between players and Astralis. And of course, that will be Ancient. P250 dropped over to Farleague and Config as well. So actually, Farleague's bought his own, and then he's dropped the extra nades over. They have three smokes here. Okay, so only two players with armor, a ton of utility. So this is the set strat. Smoke comes out towards red. He is able to creep out past the bullets. Hobbit's not able to find anything. Glaive and Zip now, they each have a smoke of their own. Glaive with two flashes, and this fight is going to be the crucial one. They need to win it, and they want to push up towards red by the looks of it. That's Config. He's running forward. He has the P250. He has the armor, and he's in the lurk position now as the rest of his team pushes in through Nut. Oh, Axile and Shiro, oh. Hobbit as well. Everyone waking up on the player's side as they're punishing with the pistols. But Config, he is the terror of T-Side Ancient. And it all comes down to him to punish with a P250. One versus five. He's been spotted. Snaps onto the head. He's about to be dead, though. Only three HP. And Axile's walking up. He sees the shadow. Tried to line up the tag, but cannot do it. And players will take the pistol. Astralis invested a ton of utility into that one for that split. But on Unfortunately for them, as soon as Hobbit gets pushed back off of middle, he turns and runs straight to the A site. He predicts the donut play, and then there's three players over there just waiting, holding. They land all their shots. Astralis can't, can't scale into the site. And by the time Config's flank comes to fruition, his yeah. whole team's dead. Just too little, too late. The snaps from the USPs were really crisp from the animals of players. And now Astralis, their response is to go fast into the second round. Running into Cave, there's an MP9 holding it. Now be enters. He backs up. And the Famous is supporting him as well. HE going to be dashed in. A little bit of damage done onto Farleg. Yeah, just, just the shrapnel to the calf, really. Bounces off his thigh. Mm. Hate it when that happens. No, it's not ideal. You can, lose, you can lose a leg doing that. Yeah, and then you have to hop into the second round. Nightmare. As it will be the nightmare for Astralis if they do decide to push through the cave. The MP9 just waiting there around the corner. But it actually is the bomb over towards A. So now what they want to do is they want to either... They're all either going to group up towards middle and try to put pressure on the donut player, which will allow their teammate to get out sight with the bomb. What they don't know is there's two players in red and one of them is Hobbit with an M4. Oh, Hobbit's just head hunting here towards middle as well, and it's easy pickings for him. Oh, he's going to get it. Oh, blame F. If he actually gets the bomb plant down, he'll be happy oh. with the funds, but the response from Axile will be agile as he runs into the site and denies the extra cash. It was a good effort. On just the Glocks, you might as well just try to try to get that bomb down. Well, it's best case scenario. You know, you make the yeah. extra money. You know the round's dead and gone, so whatever you can do to secure the bag, Davey. Yeah, and from top middle, red like that, you know, and you're just shooting the Glocks as they swing out, mm -hmm. Hobbit would have felt like he had the ring of power. True. He did indeed. And luckily, he didn't drop his massive contact lens so he could see them all. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a very different movie, wouldn't it? This Aaron just couldn't see the whole time. Imagine if he just had bad vision. Yeah. What's happening? He's like, why did they make me an eye? God <laughs> damn it. Has anybody got a monocle? <laughs> Uh, he just keeps trying to look around, but he just can't see anything. He's like, oh, I'm, re I'm really just, uh, this is just an intimidation factor, really, because I'm actually quite useless. Just have to hope they never question it. <laughs> just imagining, oh my God. It's Baku, Ja. Oh, what a good parody movie that could be. It would be huge, A parody man. Lord of the Rings movie. There you go. If casting ever doesn't work out, we can just work on parodies. Ooh, we of could just start Rings. writing the screenplay right now. True. We'll do it in a downtime. We know a couple producers. Oh, we can get them on board. Yeah. Astralis, what can you produce into the third round? Down by two at the minute. But you finally got firepower to work with. The AK in the hands of Config are going to be taken towards Donut as well. He oh. finds the adjustment shot. That's a big opener, but he's running in through red. Hobbit's here. And he wants to spray a few bullets into him. Comes close though, Davey. Hobbit stays alive. Six frag he's had into this game so far. Oh. And he peeks out with contact on middle as well. How did he get away from that? No idea. The flash, I guess, working perfectly. As he was able to tuck away and escape towards the A bomb site. 
It is Glaive walking up, and does he expect the op from Shiro? Remember, he only had the P250 into the last round, and this is why Glaive does flick up and clear it, but Shiro's nearby. He's posted on main. That's where the bomb is coming in from. Nobody's cleared him. He's going to get one for free, but it's going to come down to the timing. There's the first, and Astralis is running out of time, as it is Shiro now just delaying, just staying alive. Bomb's not going to go down. It's it. Round done. You don't have the time. It doesn't matter what you do. You're still going to be punished as well because this is Shiro's world. You're just living in it. He lurks in the back of Temple with the AWP, punishes onto the first, shuts down the second. And that's the round falling in favor of players once again. A bit of momentum towards middle. Config, after he hit that shot onto Axile, I was thinking maybe there's an opportunity for him. But Hobbit... Just unbeatable in some of these rounds. Does not want to die, does he? No, and it was actually the crouch from Hobbit that saved him. Ironically, making himself smaller even than before <laughs> as he crouches down. When Config flicks over, he hits the first three bullets, but the crouch walk across, he put the ring on, he disappeared, and the last few bullets just couldn't find him. Have you ever thought <laughs> no. that maybe... You know, like, those Cash for Gold websites? Okay. Uh, do you reckon they're just, like, a big scam where it's actually, like, dragons just trying to steal everyone's mm, gold? Big smog. Yeah, that's what I mean, see? Yeah, it's possible. Who else is buying up all the gold? I don't it's know. It's just a front for, like, a dragon. Or leprechauns. True. Could be. They're mass-producing rainbows illegally. But where's the sunshine going to fall? here into round four. As Astralis, don't really have the best bite to work with. You've got the two AKs, a couple of Deagles sprinkled in for good measure. One of them in the hands of Glaive. He's gonna see the jump spot towards middle and does hit the head, so Hobbit goes down. And there's a rotate here. Shiro's gonna be holding the angle with the AWP now. And yeah, he's just posted up, he's waiting. The setup inside of Cave, this setup has become more and more common, so you're starting to see teams sort of jiggle it out, right? People don't just walk into this angle anymore. Mm because the setup is just becoming more and more common. Now the thing for Astralis is they don't have a smoke. So they're just relying on walking up and finding these picks. And they're playing retake on A. So they are gonna be here in the cave. Config spotted them both, so now they know, but if, can they get the kills? That's the question. And will this flank find anything? Nafani is still nearby. He does peek out with the FAMAS. Playmap finds the kill though, but Shiro answers. And again, they're running out of time. And the flat, that's it, it's done. Shiro peeks out, doesn't even wait, doesn't even need to time them out. He peeks out with the op, finds two. And Astralis again, they're just, they're running out of time on these hits. They are, they are indeed. Shiro, the hero with the scope. He's able to pop off a few shots and leave them broke into the round. And players farming up the early lead on the CT side of Ancient. They've taken four on the spin, but of course, there's now money to work with once again. So the investment comes out for the Danes. Orp on Farlig. He's yet to find much leeway to get into the game. Yesterday, we saw him having a good bit of success on the map. Once he was able to flex his muscles a bit. Here, though, Inters could actually be such a problem. He's playing close towards Cave. Trader bullets between either side. He backs off, dashes out the smoke as well to buy a bit more time for them. I was looking to see where Farlig was taking this warp as well. He had it back towards yeah. the B site early, but he's wrapping off, going towards middle. That's the thing about T side Ancient, man. It's so hard to find opening op picks. This flash is going to be good. Glaive's tucked, but he has the nade out. They swing. Config does trade back. Takes a bullet in the brain. Down to just 9 HP, but does get the trade. So it is the 4 versus 4. And now Config, he needs to throw the utility that Glaive was setting up for, but players is reacting by pushing down B, and it is just Zip here. He has the MAC-10. Can he find the multi? Can he even find one? They do get spotted. Farlig cool. misses. Zip is able to get it, and there is the trade from Farlig. He peeks out. He does land that off shot, and they are going to be going up into B, but Shiro's already rotated. Shiro. He's a sniper with a hell of a scope, but can he make the adjustments to leave Ooh. Astralis broke? No. Zip straight in. Rips him to pieces with the M4, and Hobbit, left in the 1v4, is unable to do anything here. Staying alive is the best case scenario for him, and he is being hunted. Config's walking up. Just 9 HP on him, so a single bullet will dispatch him. Just get a tag out, though. Yeah, puts him down to 46. That's twice now. Config's just, like, almost killed Hobbit. It's going to start getting annoying pretty soon, I bet. Like, man, this guy just won't die. Shadow Ooh. gives him away. Yeah, it's rough, man. you got to be aware of where the sun is. See, this is why I hate the sun. Yeah, it's awful.
it burns you, it makes you die in video games, and it's just kind of cringe. Yeah, and it's like pretty, it's like too hot. Yeah, I hate that. You can't even, you can't, you can't look at it. Like, oh, what, you're, you're so cool. Like, what, we, you're not, we can't even look at you. Shut up. Quite arrogant, really, isn't it? That's the what sun? I'm saying. Yeah. Like, grow up. Yeah, stop it. What a fool. The ego is out of control. No, it really is. Unbelievable scenes. But, finally a good response from Astralis. They needed to get around on the board, and they find their footing. It looks a bit dicey. When Farlik missed that shot, oh, he's worried Zibex was actually going to fall, and then things could have got so bad for them. But he's fired up off the back of the SMG kill, goes running into the site, pieces it together, and they do get their first round on the T side. I'm surprised after Farlik missed that shot that Inter's just, like, stayed there. Just yeah. posted up with the M4. It's like, all right, no, I guess you can have a second one. You want another pick? Yeah, it, it. it felt wrong that you missed the first shot. You really should have killed one, so I'll just I'll just hang out here for you. Maybe his S key broke. Fell off. Yeah. Had to put that back on. Ratio. Yeah. Well, four one. Early flashes towards middle from either side. Config, he's just gonna run through. Wanted to go for something rapid on the SMG, but Hobbit, he hits that. Hobbit just has Config's number right now. He knows exactly how to counter it. That's like the is, that's definitely the third time he's killed him. Yeah. Maybe the fourth. And it's scary as well, because obviously I was talking about it in the pre-game, but Config on T-Sci Nation, he's a different beast compared to most players. Yeah. So if you're able to isolate him time and time again, he's going to get frustrated, and Astralis are going to get quite annoyed by it. Glaive, though, he's been mean mugging at middle. That's his second pick now. And Axile's pushed up, and he's heard this. He would have heard Glaive running away. He doesn't want to commit to the flank too early. Ooh, and for this reason, Glaive now, he's back. Oh, the timing. Axile, does he clear middle? Surely when he walks around the corner here, he's going to check to his left, and Glaive is going to go down. That is it. He's sad. He's lonely. He's dead. And now it is Nafani and Shiro inside of the cave. Counter Molotov is perfect. Blame F can't go through it. He can't waste that smoke either. They do need it to get out into the site. And by pretending to fall back now, they've repositioned and they've walked straight into Far League. That's the op kill for him. They do have the crossfire in sight. Can Astralis find them? Can they land these shots? Zip, hoping for the pick. Knows there's a player tucked in towards the back. That's oh. the spam to force him to face. Shiro, he's still hunting on a knife's edge. Inters, he'll swing around and say good night to Zip. There goes Farlick as well. So it's all on Blame F. The man with the big biceps, but he can't bite back as he's dead. And players, they get a fifth round on the CT side. Oh, look at the hype from him, eh? Yeah, he was coming yeah. in hot right there. Those fist bumps got dangerous, but broken knuckles could be coming out. Take your wrist clean off. <sighs> So Astralis, you know, it seems like when Config goes down in middle, mm -hmm. they sort of, mm, I don't want to say get lost. That's not exactly it. But they play very slowly when Config's dead. And that's why they've they've put these rounds down to the point where they're so, they're almost timing themselves out. They actually did time themselves out in the one round towards, towards A. And here, you know, just 15 seconds left. I think there was, there was 20 seconds. And the player died inside of the site there, and it's just like, you're running it real low. Without the utility, those late round executes are really difficult. Because no, yeah. it's it's the, the utility that makes those late round executes work, because you molly out all the spots they could be in. The CTs hopefully have used all their utility by that point, right? That's sort of the idea. Inters. Oh, he's fighting for cave control and zip. Yeah, I mean, he, he gets the opening kill, but unfortunately, it's onto the back of Config. For the greater good. Yeah. Denies the kill, grabs the gun, leaves him in a 4v4. Shiro watching towards the ramp. That's going to be the jump face, but no bullet to smash the face of the T's. So Astralis slow it down and start to dial it back a bit. And they are just grouping up. They do have some utility here. The two smokes, two Molotovs, the one flash. 
The wow. spam onto Shiro. Zip just taking him right out through the wall. The smoke inside of K for Nafani does block off Farley. He did get tagged once with the P250. He still has 80 HP, though, as the double flank is coming. They're both walking towards the ramp. Blame F. He's going back with the op, and no. Are they going to clear him? They don't. Nafani finds Zip. He knows there's one in the smoke towards Long, and Hobbit wins out on Blame. It is just Glaive. He has the tech. He has the head armor. They don't know where he is, but they have an inkling. Now they know. Shots ring out. He finds the dink. He finds so much damage onto Hobbit and Nafani, but cannot get the kills. And it is going to be players picking up their sixth. That was just the half by from Astralis, and they made it so close. Dangerously tight round. From the way it started to how it finished, night and day difference. Rough round, though, man. That was really clean. The spam, beautifully timed. Good pickup. But all in all, players, they're still making this huge buffer become a reality on their CT side. You've got six rounds now. You've still got the weapons to work with as well. Shiro, he's back on the orb. He's going to be waiting for the fight to come towards A main. This time stationed over there. A bit of a difference in the setup. And the T's, they're going out middle. And remember, this is Astralis's map pick as well. There's another opening for Astralis. Blame F finds the first onto Inters. And Farley gets the second onto Axel. So this is more like it for Astralis. They get mid control. They find the picks. Molotov to force Nafani forward. They would have heard the tag, and there's the pre-fire from Blame. That Molotov just giving away his position inside of the cave. And Hobbit, he needs to come up massive. Hobbit has to hold the line. And stop them from being able to get into the bomb site. Playmef, he's gone on the recovery mission all the way back to spawn. Throws the bomb on his back and rotates around. And Config, he's just sat inside of red. So if Shiro tries to wrap over to support his teammate, he could take a bullet to the back. And the whole thing could fall just on Hobbit. Will they clear him out? That's the big question. They've got their eyes honed in on it. They're just going to be waiting to see if he overextends. But they do flick off. Oh... Timing's going to be absolutely everything here. Zip's a little bit paranoid about it, and he's going to hold the angle. There we go. That's the frag now found. And obviously, Config holding towards mid. He's just got to secure this one onto Shiro. Won't get it, but it's surely just going to be the save. Ooh, he's coming back for more. So the thing is, everyone in this in the server right now thinks Shiro's going to save, right? Everyone. Astralis does. They're already hunting through T-spawn. He's playing close CT. Part of me wants to believe he's going to go for this late, and there's a kit down somewhere in sight that's been calm to him, and he's going to go for it. But I don't think that's the case. I think he just believes this is the best spot to save because he thinks they're going to be hunting him over towards A. But Astralis doesn't have the money to hunt regardless. They don't want to overcommit. They don't want to drop these guns. And now, Astralis, they get their second, but also, crucially, because of all the kills they've been getting in the previous rounds, players doesn't have the money to buy. You're going to get a gun out on Nafani and Axile. Shiro's going to have to drop one over to Inters or Hobbit, but somebody is going to be low, low weaponry, low utility, whatever. That's, that's just unlucky, isn't it? Yeah, that's really disgusting from his POV. You would be fuming if that happened to you on cave. Oh, yeah. I mean, blame F, though. He is the king of cave sometimes. True. All right, round nine. Six to two to work with. Looks like players did want to go for the aggression outside a cave with a two-man setup, but the flashes will hold them at bay early, and the smoke is down as well. So instead, they're just going to play together on the crossfire with the MP9 playing anti-flash. And this is just going to be the full execute from Astralis as well. There is two players here inside of the cave, though, so they're not going to be close enough to help Nafani. He's here by himself. Flash hasn't come in. Nafani plays anti, expecting it, but there is no flash, and Config spams back onto Inters. This bomb is going to go down. And you could see there, Nafani, he was tucked in the corner. He was playing anti-flash, but there was no flash coming from Astralis. They just ran at him. Ooh, Config goes walking past Hobbit. He's able to get one shot off, but he's fumbling with the guns. And he gets gatted down by Blame F. So Shiro and Axile, the last two, all the way over towards the A site, forced to just save this. So this will be a third round for Astralis with just the one casualty on Config. And it was a good call by Astralis as well. I'm assuming they predicted the double, the double cave play. 
from players. Mm. And so the response is, all right, well, we'll just execute up B, smoke off cave, and rush long because we believe you guys are going to be playing double cave. And that's exactly what they did. And Astralis pick up their third. They've now broken the money from players. So this should be, say should be, the fourth for Astralis on the T side. Remember, this was their map pick. And now Shiro needs to find a way to have impact with the AWP because Astralis just isn't going A. They're just like, all right, fine. Like You're going you're gonna to just put your AWP in Temple the whole round. We're just not going to go A then. Also, I just saw the little uh, glimpse of the update from the A stream there, or the B stream even. It was a 16-6 victory over Team Spirit for Sinners. Wow. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. Look at that. Ooh. Damn, 16-6. Yeah, yikes. I wonder what happened in that game. I'll find out. Is that is uh, a pretty one-sided affair. Not exactly what you'd expect. Zedko and Neofrag just popping off. 26 and 23 kills apiece. Yikes. On nuke. Well, that's how things go for Team Spirit. But we're back in the action now into the 10th round. Shiro's got the AWP out. The rest of his team, of course, just trying to play around that with the pistols. Two players set up inside of the donor. One of us being a Tech-9, the other's the AWP. And Astralis running more of a default. And they just want to try to figure out where the op is exactly, right? That's sort of the idea. You don't want to run into the saved op. It is inside of Donut, and they are stacking four over towards the A site, like you said. So they're just committing to holding this. And if Astralis goes B, they're like, all right, that's fine. Oh, but is Farley just going to walk right into this angle for Shiro? He's waiting for him, and he is. That's a free kill, but one man has made it across. That's config. He's used that timing to get across into red, and it's working perfectly. Shiro's now adjusting. He's rotating over, but he's not going to expect config to be here. He thought he had the line, and this is going to be the free kill for config. Config, with a cloves line play, slams into the face of Shiro. And now you can execute from all angles, explode out onto the B site, get the bomb down, and find where the CTs are lurking. A recovery mission could be in play to see if the AWP can still be grabbed. Axile stays alive as well, and Inters will find the AWP at middle. Now you just need to get out of there. Stay alive, keep them in the game, bring those into the next round, because this is going to be an Astralis pickup. And if Hobbit can actually pick up this other AWP towards CT, there's nobody looking at it right now. He's able to grab it. That's a double op being saved here. Never mind, he throws it away. Oh, he's going to cycle both of the guns. So he does actually take the AK with him as well. I think he's going to throw the op away and try to just save the AK. Hob or, you know, players, they don't really double op a whole lot. I think sometimes I've seen Axile with it. But that's about it. They're not, they're not huge on the double ops. So I think it's more likely he just throws this op away now. Yeah, and just goes for the AK instead. Forced Astralis to have to buy another one if Farlig wants to bring it out. Which he does. All right. Business as usual then, six to four. Two rounds of difference. Not an awful T side from Astralis. With some of the picks they're finding as well, and they've actually got weapons, they could have a little bit more momentum. But we're back into the game, round 11. Lots of utility going out in mid. Ooh, Farley, he runs straight up for that pick in cave. There's nobody there to find just yet. He's jiggle peeking it. If Farley gets the timing right here, there it is. The free kill for him. And that's why you, you see p players just not jiggling with their, with their guns out. That's why you jiggle with your knife or a nade out because you're so much faster. When you're doing it with your gun, because you're so slow, it makes it so much easier for the opera to land that shot. And that's exactly what happened. They've walked all the way into A, and there's only one man nearby. That's Axile, just outside of Donut, but he's on the mid side. So now Astralis has the read that they are actually stacking over towards B. And they are just calling the bomb to A. So sometimes you might commit to going towards B with, with the double flank. On this occasion, they're just going to call everybody back over. Now, the one thing they don't have control of is Donut, but they have a ton of utility. There's no reason for that not to get smoked off here. And this will just end up being the save from players. When this bomb gets planted, 
It'll just be the save. There's the smoke for donut. And I don't imagine they'll go for this. Oh my god, they are. And Config gets Shiro again on the rotation. Two rounds in a row now. Bomb is going to drop, but that shouldn't actually matter. They should just be able to recover that one and plant. Surely. Guys. 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 No, not like this, please. Drop that re-smoke. No! He gets the bomb again. How are they doing this? How is players letting this happen? They're making it happen. The op kill from Farley oh. and Glaive does get the trade back onto Axile. Finally, he stopped. And it is going to come down to the one versus one, and Hobbit knows where he is. He's jiggling. He's trying to bait the shot. If he can get this one out, this could be a massive. And Farling misses, and players somehow win that round. Astralis completely messing up the plant. They mess up the post plant. They don't cover the guy planting. And somehow, players win that round. What a absolute mess up from Astralis. Man, they have made a meal out of that one. Astralis, it looked so shaky, so fragmented. It finally felt like they had gotten back to a point where it's like, okay, you're going to get the round now. It took you a little while, but you're going to get it. And then no, Hobbit, he closes it down. 14 frags to his name. A 7 to 4 split. Oh, that is soul crushing. Okay. That is going to ruin you. And there's no excuse for that, okay? Because Config had full CT control and he killed the person rotating. You have four guys towards the site. Four. The only place they can kill their bomber from is Donut. The first kill on the spam, okay, that happens, right? That Okay, fine. These next kills that he gets are ridiculous. Drop that smoke into Donut. As soon as you hear him spamming the smoke, everyone needs to be shooting back at him. Molly behind the smoke. Spray into it. Do not let him make that play. There's no reason to not have two players dedicated to fighting the man in Donut. While, you're, while your teammate's planting the bomb. There's no threat anywhere else. Config has CT. You don't have to watch Temple. You don't have to worry about the CT scale. Just what a mistake. As now they're scaling into B, and this is going all the way towards players until Farley does answer back with the headshot on the AK. Glaive, there's one man playing on the far side of the smoke, and he's able to answer it. Two versus two now, and maybe Astralis can pull off the 2v4 like players did in the previous round. They need to. If they want to keep this close at the half, you've got to take everything you can find. Shiro. He's on the site. He's got the backup of Axile. Glaive, suspicious about the fight from middle. Farlig's walking into cave, and he's actually going to go for the flank the whole way around. He's clearing out through Donut and pushing up into the A site. Farlig's just held for this towards cave the entire time. If he can potentially bait them over as well, this could be huge. It really does come down to how the CTs opt to play this one. We're still a minute on the clock. Axile and Shiro walking up together. He throws away the AWP and instead goes on to the M4. And they have led them to believe that this is actually going to be a late round play towards A. They think the T's have taken a bomb there. Instead, the bomb is still lurking at A. And it's just Glaive here on a Hitman mission. Oh, and now Farley's coming back. They go, they peak middle, and now Glaive has been waiting for this face in CT. He waited for so long, almost 40 seconds. He was sitting there just waiting for Shiro to walk up, and at the exact moment that he does is when Glaive moves and clears the close CT angle. Molotov is going to allow the plant, but Farley has to pull off the one versus two, the smoke, and they're going to scale fast, and Shiro, the wide swing, the F1 peak, and that is the headshot, and he's going to go back for his op. So players pick up their eighth. Astralis not able to answer back. The timing for Glaive there is just so unlucky. That's really rough for him. Tried to play the mind games, play the positioning, but just as he faces the CTs, we're in a prime spot to stop it. And keep in mind, this is Astralis's map pick. Yep. Ancient is their turf. And at the minute, they're being turfed out. Players, you've got a four round lead. You're looking good on your CT side. And they're winning rounds they shouldn't even have a chance in. Yeah. I mean, still, it, they are on the CT side. And four rounds on T-side Ancient, definitely, it isn't terrible, right? It's a very CT-sided map. And we saw Astralis are very good at their CT side as well. So this isn't the end of the world. It's not a, it's not a terrible half, at least not yet. If, if it goes 11-4, that's pretty bad, but it's not, you know what I mean? It's not awful. It's just like, okay, fine. We didn't have a great T side, but now we get to go to CT and just start stomping them, right? That's, that'll be the thought process. Yeah. It's not just, it's, 
it's not just that the scoreline's 8-4. I just, I can't believe Astralis lost that three versus five. I just, I can't believe that. It's a punishing round to lose. And it can dent your confidence as well. And that's something that you need in this sort of matchup. Config as well. They've had his number time and time again, and he is such a beast on T-Side Ancient. The fact he's only six for 13 and hasn't been able to find any real leg room for them is gonna make it even harder for Astralis to get into the game. Yeah, he has died every single round. Yep. Although he's got crucial kills on the rotations when he's pushed up through middle. Oh, timing on these peaks are just ridiculous. Axile jumps up, Glaive walks around the corner and Axile can't land it. The in-game leader from Astralis finds the headshot. Keeps all of his HP. Oh, oh and a crucial miss from Farling, what? and he's going to be punished. Hobbit flicking up, lands the dink onto Glaive as well. And Farling, with two crucial misses, means that Astralis is going to get control of middle. And now, Zip gets the kill onto Inter. His device is pushed all the way through. Can he get into the back of Shiro now? Zip, aware of the possibility, throws the flash out. Does Shiro peek? Does he face? He's taking his time. And he actually now knows, he has the idea that, that they're going to be pushed up into CT. Not calmed over to Nefani though, and he is going to drop. Astralis pick up their fifth. It was looking pretty bad for them, but at the end, players not able to secure it. No, I felt like he could have been in a good spot there. The linchpin towards Temple, potentially, but they starve off any chance of him finding impact into the round. And Astralis do get another one on the board. Hobbit. Really did go on an unexpected journey in this round. He ran out middle, he was diving over bullets, finding all of the kills. But Glaive, with him staying alive, even with just 10 HP, that was enough for him to get the round over the finish line and take us eight to five as we're coming up close towards the end of the first half. Hobbit, he's just running in with a USP. I'm a little surprised that Nefani wasn't expecting any sort of CT play from Glaive. In that moment, okay, Config runs through the wall. Glaive gets caught pulling a nade out and he is still gonna find the three regardless. Three kills for him, it is now just Nafany. And it is, he is just dead. Yeah, Farleg with a Crocodile Tears. Shoots him in the back of the head on the P250. And an 87 yeah, would be massive. Even a 9-6. This, this is now a very good half for us. Yeah. Could have been even better. But, you know, we'll let that one go. Eventually, I'll let it go mentally. It will bother you for a little bit. Once they get onto the CT side, though, I'm sure all will be forgotten if Blame F is able to go up to his old tricks. But still, last round of the half. Hobbit again towards middle. Prepared for the scrap. Does a lot of damage, but goes down in the opening commotion. That's Config with the initial pick. Blame oh. F on the flick. Oh, oh, that is grotesque. What a flick. What a 180 from him. Config found the opening into this one, but does drop to Nefani as he's pushing through red. You can see Axile responding here towards main. Farleg not going to miss that one. It lands. They get the trade. They hear the rotations, and they're just going to run over to B. Played the numbers game. Link up together. Bomb shuffling back through spawn. Glaive as well holding the angle. He's going to see the peak onto the head. And it all goes down to Shiro. 11 to 7. He's had some big rounds, but a lot of them have been when he's had the AWP in his hands. This time, it's the silenced M4. And he is tucked away deep in Ivy. He's holding for the B aggression, but the bomb should just be planted. And once that happens, he doesn't have a kid. He's got to try to go for the retake, obviously. It's the last round of the half. Molotov inside a B. He clears out his CT spawn, worried about that flank from Glaive. This deep smoke has just pretty much ruined the round for him. There's just no way, like, he has, to, he has to try to go through it because he doesn't have a kit, so he's running out of time. He's still worried about this flank from CT that isn't coming. There's no one there. And by the time he waits for this smoke to fade, there's the second one, and now everything's falling apart. He just really, he literally just, he's like, all right, fine, whatever, you win. <laughs> he's just like, yeah. I can't, okay, I can't win, that's fine. I'll just run through the smoke. I have to get it over with at that point. Yeah. There really is nothing you can do. So an 8-7 half, that's actually massive for Astralis. They'll be landed with the way that's gone. God, look at that stare. I can't. I'm no. mesmerized. <laughs> Players, knowing how close they were to a dominant half. I can't get over that flick. That was just unreal. It is filthy. All those deathmatch hours he puts in. Yeah. Now that he doesn't have to in-game lead, it's just more DM time. Just focus on shooting heads. <laughs> 
Okay, it's the second half pistol. Zip's got the doolies. Love that for him. Yeah, where's this mad man going to be taking these bad boys? Ooh, over towards A. B even. He's taking them inside a cave. It should be A. Yeah, I know. It is the classic Mandela effect of Ancient. Do need to flip those sights. Glaven the 1v1 towards A main. Axile's going to walk in. Oh my Ooh, fight towards Nut as well. This is looking a bit risky. Glaive, he gets caught on the timing, so he's shot in the back of the head by the Glock. Farlig, he'll snipe down one, but the kills are falling over to the player's camp. Oh, all right, Farlig. 10 for 10, two kills on a pistol. What more can he do? He needs to try to find the player that's inside of the site right now. No Axiles here. He's actually able to land the headshot, and Shiro peeks out to help him. That zip with the dualies, he goes down, not able to find any impact with the weapons. As they're grouping up towards middle now, Shiro's going to have some help from Nafani, and they're going to commit through Donut. Blame F is here. Can he do something amazing? The big boulder of Blame F. Is he able to find them? So far, the shot's not landing. He's running low on bullets. Gets the first. Flicks can't land the headshot onto Shiro. Can't land the bullets. He does get one. He makes it interesting. But in the end, it's players picking up the second half pistol. It looked close. It looked scary. Blame F and Farlig finding important kills. But Axile, he did an awful lot. Massive round from him. Mauls the CTs of Astralis here in the second pistol. Now they've got the better buy because of it. The SMGs are out. Double mat 10. One Galil and the two AKs. But look at the A main attack. They're running in with a 5 7. Blame F. Oh, Furious on the pistol. Taps down two of them. And already this is just a free versus free. Ooh, thankfully for what? them, Axile answers back, but that is config. That's what he can do. The Deagle headshot found in middle. The MAC-10's dropped. It is just the two AKs remaining. And what are they going to do? 5-7 from Glaive. Spots out one. More info gathered. Zip finds the back of the player in Shiro, but he's not able to land the kill from that range. Just can't find the headshot. RNG doesn't favor him as Glaive has tucked himself away in the corner. He is going to be able to find him. That's Axile dropping. It has to be Shiro. One versus three. Gets the first. Takes the tag, though. And the AK is already rotated into the site. The second round, one out by Astralis. Blame F on the A main crunch. Just annihilates them with the pistol prowess. All of the bullets causing so much carnage. Config as well with the deagle towards middle. Comes in like a can opener and just takes the top off. And now Astralis, they're only run one round away from tying this game up. This is their map pick. They're on the CT side now. And they're making it look a lot more lively. Tech nines for players. 1P250 as well for good measure. They're all grouped up outside of B. We know what Astralis like to do here. Blame F. When he's in a position to push, he tends to just swing on you at cave. Oh, yeah. I think if he had an M4, maybe he would be a little bit more confident in this fight. Yeah, the famous not so much. No, no. The gun does suck. Mm-hmm. Do hate it. It is just kind of bad. They're all grouping up towards ramp. And the execute should be coming in. They have the utility for it. Oh, Shiro and the quick switch. Molotov's coming in. The only man in the site is Zip. He has the MAC-10. The flashes are good. They full blinded him. They're going to rush up towards long. Farley is only here. He's the only one here for the response. And respond he does. Three M4 frags for him as Hobbit finds blame. It's the 2v2. They have the map control. But Config coming in with the swing. The double headshot denies players their bomb plant. Denies them their response. The Stone Cold Killer at the end of the round there. So it's all tied up. It's neck and neck. Nine a pop for either team. And this game has been so back and forth into a few of the rounds. So Ooh. many weird plays. The moments of madness. The players have nothing to invest at all. Just Glock. So this should be a formality for Astralis. Get themselves on the double digits first. Is that Ecos? Can you, can you smell them? Do I, do I smell Ecos for Blame F at B? 
Oh, it looks like it. Dun, 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 dun. Benjamin. Dun, 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 More like Harrison Ford dun, dun, as he dun, dun, runs in, dun, taking dun, the treasure there. Dun, Two dun, kills dun. on the M4. He wants the third and final one on the spam, but instead Axel goes down to zip in the close quarters engagement. And Blame F, whenever he smells those ecos, he becomes that big rolling boulder down the lane. Trying to find every single one of those. This time with the M4, he has confidence in his swing. Three kills for him on the round. And that was the full eco, of course, for players. So now we're going to see the guns brought out. Shiro shouldn't have the op. No, he doesn't. Oh, I just realized Inter's on 2 and 15 right yeah, now. Yeah, man. He's had a really slow game. Oh, that's rough. No, it's a shame to see. But this is not a slow round at all. They are just running out A main and trying oh. to execute onto the A site instantly. Execution yeah, against Glaive. He's gone down, as you say in his name, and he's woken up. Say him and he will appear. Config now. He's pushing in and he can't find the shot. Axile lands the kill. And this should be the save now for Astralis. But again, Zip lands the dink, but no frag. It is just blame F. He's by himself, 1v5. They're already hunting him, too. Look, there's already the player in T-spawn. That's Hobbit. Yeah, Hobbit has gone full John Rambo. He wants to find him and cut him down, stop him from being able to save anything into the realm. Blame F. Just going to tuck in. Needs to hold on to all of his equipment here. The player is holding on to the tight game as it will swing back 10 to 10. Again, level footing in the score line. Astralis shouldn't have too much of a problem buying. Yeah, I was going to say, Far League and Glaive will be low, but Blame F can drop one. Could even drop two, actually, but it would be the FAMAS, so it's like... Eh, eh, you know? Do you really want the FAMAS that like, bad? I'll give you one. I'll drop it, but I, I don't know. And good for Inters to find some impact into the round as well, right? Finding that entry over on A. It does tickle me with uh, Config's player picture, by the way. Whenever he gets flashbang, it looks like when you're like sat up playing games at 4 a.m. and you open uh. a text document. Like, oh, yeah, it does, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, look at that. Just, ah, my eyes. I'm blind. Oh, hello, Config. He's arrived on the server. Hits the headshot onto Hobbit. So that's an opening pick going away to CTs. Wow, oh. config. Giving it now. Two clean kills. And the smoke towards main as well. It's just going to slow down this play from players. Counter smoke again. And they're just like, stop. We want to walk out. You're using all these grenades. If you didn't use grenades against us, we would have won this round. That's what they're thinking right now. I want to try and rotate off. They've got the bomb on the back of Axar. He's still lurking towards A main. They expect the CTs to have taken deep control as well after they found those opening picks towards the B site. So they're going to take their time clearing out all the angles. And they have had to fall back over towards B. Now, the good thing for them. Uh, okay, never mind. They're just saving. Take it all back. Again, I was going to go say something. I was like, well, Astralis, they don't have any smokes left. So they're going to be able to get up onto the site. And they're not going to have a smoke for the diffuse. So as long as they get the pick, and it was just going to create this whole storyline of things that are just... And then Axel just grabs the bomb and goes, no. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was like the metaphor for my like build up I was going to do for that one. And as I'm starting to do it, he just throws the bomb away. He's like, yeah. shut up, noob. You are the bomb and you've just been thrown. Yeah. Manhandled me. Yeah. So Astralis, with the 11th round, the metronome of the game continues to swing back and forth. Little fist bumps coming out. And players, they haven't really found a way so far on the T side to get out mid and deal with config, right? It's still very early in the half. So I'm assuming we're going to see a little bit more of that because that was huge in the last game that Astralis played. Even against ASG, right? That was the one spot where they were able to find the openings. Like, yeah, Astralis beat them 16-5, but that was just because the other four players, I mean, Blame F at lane was just an absolute monster in that game. 
Yeah, no one can start playing math then. He just ran away with it, did whatever he wanted every single round. And here again, he's pushed up on the cave as well. He's been able to peek out and look straight down the ramp. So they've already got so much map control. He will cascade back though, after the utility comes out on middle. But they have got a deep smoke. And the T's are walking off. And there was some aggression here inside of A main. Oh, and Config, he's still here. He's still nearby. And Axile actually lands the shot. First bullet, straight to the brain of Config. But they still have two players inside of the A site. Because Far League has been posted on this line in middle, they know that no one's crossed over to red. And so that allows them to play heavy towards really whichever site that they want. Two inside Donut, one now in CT spawn. That is Blame F. They're gambling over here towards A. And Glaive, he is, a, he is peeking out into mid, but he's still nearby as Far League's come back, and he's going to get the first contact. Gets the one, needs to jump away. Blame F with the second, and they're in such good positions now. Turmoil calls towards the temple from Blame F. Glaive as well. Stops the bleeding. And doesn't allow anyone access into the A site. It's just Shiro with the AWP. Scoped in, looking to punish, but time's ticking away. Hits the first flick, can't land the adjustment shot onto Glaive. Goes down just before time passes over in the round. And Astralis, again, adds another piece to their counter. Getting closer and closer to that 16th round to lock down the first map here. This is their map pick in the best of three. A best of three, which decides which team will be going to the major in Antwerp. And double op was recovered for the CTs as well. One being passed over to Config. Is the mid player for the team. Counter smoke coming in towards middle. That's just to deny the information. As he is down at the bottom. And they actually have both ops over towards A. We have Farley posted on A main. He is by himself and he's in a very advanced position. And that's where players are going. It's going to be difficult for him to multi-frag. He might find the opening, but they're going to close him down. He's poised, he's prepared, but he misses the initial shot and they go sprinting up behind him. Hard commit with the AK spray and he falls because of it. Now you've got an edge. You need to get the bomb down swiftly though. Smokes are up, bomb going down. CT's fighting back towards CT spawn, but there's a second frag for the T side in a round. All things are going the way of players as it's just Config and Blame F that remain alive. Axile, he's been sent off to the Burns ward, but players are certainly heated up in this one. And Farlig, he just wasn't expecting the A play. He's playing close. The idea there is you just find the pick on the one A lurker. But they were going for the full A execute. As soon as he heard those nades being pinned is when he should have been running away. He wanted to get that first shot off. And the player he shot at, yeah, he missed that guy in, in A main. But that wasn't the player that was going to kill him. It was the guy close on his left that was the threat. You can't get away to Donut. You don't have the time. They're just too close. So even if he landed that kill, he still gets immediately traded. And then his team, they're not, they're not able to rotate in time because they think he has a main control. So that no one's close enough. And it's just, it's a huge problem. It's not necessarily a mistake because like they didn't know they're going to do a full A execute. But it is like, I don't know, as soon as you hear those nades being pulled close on your left, if you hear a nade close left when you're there, you need to just get out of there. Run and jump away to Donut because you are going to die. One for one's the best you can hope for. Rambunctious attack towards the ramp early and Config scopes him with the AWP. Takes the legs off. And drops players down into a four versus five. Double cave set up as well. So Astralis looking very heavy handed into the 24th round. Yeah, they brought up the double ops again. And Hobbit, he can't cross over. This is the only line he can hold. He knows that. If he crosses over, he could potentially walk into the op of config. And the, uh, uh, of course. <laughs> uh, just of course. The, as I'm saying, is like he can't cross because config's op is there. Config pulls out a smoke, walks around the corner, and that's the exact moment Hobbit runs and jumps across. It's just like, all right. And now Hobbit, he's in the back line towards CT. He could be oh. such a nuisance. He's going to get the kill onto Glaive as well on the rotate. And the whole round goes into utter chaos. Shiro with the orb wields it like a shotgun and blows Config to bits. Farlig falls, missing a critical hit as well. And this is just looking rough. Hobbit with a real heroic play. Three frags into the round, 22 kills to his name. Just blame F left alive. 
And he's got no one to blame this round on. It's dead and gone. Uh, yep. Yep, it is. And that's that's how you can tell config is like a secondary opera and not a primary opera. Mm -hmm. Because an opera recognizes that you cannot give up this line, right? This is, It's so important to not let them cross. And the worst part is, because he threw the smoke and then re-peaked out into mid, from his point of view, no one crossed. There was literally like half a second when Hobbit could have crossed and that is just the exact half a second when he did and so that wasn't communicated over to Glaive and then Hobbit's in the back line he gets a free pick config drops because they molly him out because they know he's in there because he just threw a smoke and scoped and made a bunch of noise and then as soon as Farley misses that one onto Hobbit it's just done it's just over it's just like just hold the line until they force you off it's so important. You have to just post up and just hold it. If they force you off, they force you off. You can communicate it over. You know, you can do whatever. But until they make you leave your line as an opera, you're not you're not supposed to give it up. Oh, triple boost coming. Inter seemed to be partially aware of it at least. Oh, you know what's funny? I just realized. So Inter's got that opening pick a couple rounds ago, right? That put him up to three frags. But then his Molotov team killed yeah, Axile, so he's, he's back, back down to two. two. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, and then if he dies right there to the triple boost, it's just like insult to injury yeah. again, just even worse. It's just like, man, give him a break. Getting progressively more tilted. Yeah, just give him a break, man. Come on. He didn't deserve for wrecked. Shiro's going to be watching. He's hit this shot in the past. Oh. This time he does actually miss it, and he's able to jump away. So the CT still have five alive. Oh, blame F. With the hero M4, takes the peek out towards middle, but Shiro... Does find the reaction shot. Stays alive with 9 HP. And now it's a five versus four with all of the T's marauding their way into the B site, which is completely open. They should be able to get this backstab off onto Hobbit as well. So that's potentially an AK grabbed, which they could either save or use into this round. The game's tied up 12 to 12 at the minute, and they are wrapping back round towards B. They're going swiftly into this one. They're bringing the rifles here as well. Farlig, he's only on 22 HP, and he's looking for the kills. Zip's got an AK, he's pulled up. Hard spray from Inters. There's the follow-up frag from Axile, and it's all on Zip. He's going to be swung on. Does hit one, down to the 1v2. Oh, he's taking a peek out on the ramp. Shiro is so low. He's only got 9 HP. There is a defuse kit in his back pocket. He's grabbed the flashbang as well. Clears the ramp. Does he expect the face from the cave? He wants to tap the bomb. Watching ramp, expecting them to peek together. They are going to face onto him. He's seen one. If he goes in, he might be able to cleave his way through them, but it's a bait so that Shiro can watch the line with the AWP. He hits the shot, pulls back the bolt, and another round goes there. <laughs> what hey. was that? So that's got to be done. Little hand slap. They could have just started holding hands. That would have been cute. Yeah. So players are battling back. They're fighting back. They're keeping this close. Realistically, Astralis' money wasn't very good. They should have held on to those two guns that they had. They kind of... It's not that they needed them, per se. Actually, no, they did need them. Look, Zip and Config are both on FAMAS just to make sure they can get the full nades. There's no kits. They needed to hold on to those guns. It's a small mistake, but it could cost them this round. And if they lose this round, then they're on half by, which means they're giving up match point. Oh, map point. It is BO3 now. Is that BO3 now after all? And also, this is the qualifying game. So one of these two teams will be at the major in Antwerp. If you want to get your tickets, QR code is on your screen. Next yeah, those, time that one pops can. up. Yep, next yeah. time it pops up, you scan that bad boy. It's a whole commodity. Once they're gone, they're gone. They ain't coming back. But will Astralis be able to come back with that weakened buy? Ooh, very aggressive play down the bottom of the ramp. Spam out on the Famos. M4 gets that kill. Probably does. Instead, it's just a ton of damage distributed between the Ts. Oh, Hobbit. He's waiting for this one. He's going to walk in and finds the headshot onto Blame F. Ooh. Follow-up tag as well. Bit of a stalemate, but you do have the firepower advantage in the Battle of Attrition. Five versus four. We're still a minute and ten seconds on the clock, and Hobbit, he's just going in. 
They're grouping. They are going to clear him, but again, the FAMAS isn't able to land the kill. He swings out, gets one more tag onto Far League, puts him down to 66, and now the pop flash is in. It's so good. They don't clear the angle. Axile spins, lands the headshot, and gets the second. Far League cannot respond. The bomb is going to go down, and Config, with just the FAMAS, has to save, and this is one of the saddest saves in Counter-Strike right here. You know you have to hold on to the FAMAS, but you're like, <laughs> really? Do I, though? Like, do I need this next round? I'd rather have a Deagle. Yeah. Worth its weight in gold. And no opportunity to really be bold with this Famous. So the round goes the way of players. 14 on the board. One away from map point. Two away from the win on the home turf of Astralis. They chose Ancient into this best of three. And if they can't answer back soon, they could be losing it. Then we'd move on to Dust 2. And Dust 2, that could be a spicy little meatball, especially if players are able to pick up this and take the upset win on Astralis' map pick. This whole series could go from looking like we're going to get three maps out of it to yeah. potentially being done in two. I'm shocked that they haven't been able to do more here on their CT side. Some real close rounds, don't get me wrong. But it just seems, I don't know, it just seems wild to me. And going into Dust 2, the big problem for Astralis is that in the last three months, they've played it five times, haven't won a single time. They'd have to break that and finally get a win on Dust 2 if they want to take the series to the third and final map of Inferno. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. Config trying to keep us in the present for now. He gets one, but Axile... Oh, he's been putting all of his points into agility, Davey. Man's flicking and certainly bickering back. That's the one saved weapon for the CTs as well. So now it's just pistols in a three versus four. And he's popping off. Now, don't get me wrong. He's no Spinks, mm. but still 27 and 13 right now for Axile. And a massive impact player. Him and Hobbit have had some just absolutely unreal rounds that have just... Single-handedly, they've been able to pick up the wins. As the flanks are coming in now, but like you said, just the pistols, only armor on Blame F. And unless Zip can do something dirty with this Deagle from CT spawn, this should be around going the way of players. Far League has grabbed an AK, but again, like I said, no armor. And now the nades isolate Zip as well. Far League's making noise. Shiro's heard him. He spins. He lands it. That's the AK down. And again, it's one of those moments where it's like, Probably should have just saved that, shouldn't you? Like, it, what do you? Were you, you going to go in and kill them all? Were you? Yeah, going to run, going to run through the donut and one tap four players. Is that what you were going to do? He wishes, but it's not going to come true. And instead, the only fact that we can say here is the players have made it to 15. Match point is theirs. One round away from going to dust two with a lead in the series against Astralis. Astralis that feel like they're falling flat now on their CT side. The buy will be coming out. Farlig already dons the orb. Curious to see what the response will be from Astralis. It feels like they're giving so much respect over yes. as well, which yes. isn't what we usually see from Astralis. They do go for a double orb though. So Glaive's got the second scope this time. I wonder if he's going to keep it or if he is going to pass that over. We did see him do a, a bit of opping when Lucky was on the roster, you know? Yeah, full glass cannon as well, though, because they just didn't have the funds. Yeah, he goes for the nades instead of the light armor. He had 800, and he was trying to decide there. You could see he's like, do I buy the light armor? Do I buy the nades? All right, I'll buy the nades. So he's backing himself to land those shots and be able to get away. That's one thing that any secondary opera can be good at is just practicing your, your, where you, you take your shot, fall back to your next line. Take your shot, fall back to your next line. If you position yourself well, you can make it so you're going to get two or three shots off at any given round. Flash goes over. Tag on to Naphne. Now, Blame F would have called that. He would have called that you're hitting him. And he spins. He looks at his teammate like, are you shooting me, bro? What's going on right now? He's worried about it. Blame F wants to give them a reason to be paranoid, though, nope. towards Cave. He's seen the jump spot around the corner. They dash out the Molotov, and he backs back. They were hoping that they were going to be chasing him down so that potentially they can find the frag. They will still hit one. Naphany falls, and it is a four versus five into the 28th round. Yeah, re-aggression from Blame finds, finds the pick there, and I was I was actually about to say how Players has done such a good job just nullifying Blame F's presence there. Yeah. But this time, they force him back. 
He re-aggresses, finds the kill, picks up that second smoke, drops that in the same spot. So 40 seconds left. They are inside of Cat, but they haven't been able to scale forward to Cave. There's one player lurking over towards A. That's Hobbit, but the bomb is towards B. They're boosting. Farling hasn't heard it, and Shiro lands the shot. Farling again on the close angle gets punished. Stunning shot from Ciro. So much more to be done, though. And Axar, he goes in again. Grabs the orb, wielding his teammate's weapon. But Blame F will batter him. And it all falls down to a close three versus three with just 16 seconds on the clock. The bomb is sprinting in towards oh. the A site and the CTs believe it to be B. Shiro can get the plant just in the nick of time. And we're into a 2v2 all on the line here for Astralis. What a call by players to rotate over. Blame F drops to enters inside of B and that even solidifies the rotations and now the CTs are split. They have to scale forward. Glaive has the AWP, but it is the glass cannon. Is he going to be able to find the shot? He's tucked away. He's missed him. He's running forward, and this should be a freebie for Hobbit, and it's not looking good. No, he clears it. Glaive, absolute genius to find that what? frag and the second. Glaive, it looked like the round going the way of players. The perfect call. Hobbit tucked away in the corner, but Glaive with the big brain pushes up and clears him. Oh, when striving for glory, you've got to get gory. And that's exactly what Glaive does on the scope. Two big shots. Impact frags on the secondary AWP there. And they keep themselves in the game. They hedge their bets slightly closer. The tightest intricacies on that round as well. It looked like players were going to finally close out Ancient and send us to Dust 2. Instead, it's 15-13. Astralis fighting towards middle once more as well. Config, he charges up, dashes the smoke. Hobbit <gasps> walks into him. Point blank, the close quarters combat goes the way of Config. And the flash going, oh, he's timing them. naphany has got into cave. Blame F doesn't see him. He's got the nade out and he drops. Naphany just walking straight through the smoke. Counter smoke comes in and he pushes through again. The second kill for him on the round. This man is the new smoke criminal as he's got two inside of the cave. A break in the action as the pace slows down. Shiro poised on the angle, though, expecting the face. And Glaive, he walks into it, giving him another pick and giving players another edge into the 29th round. And Config's rotated over, but those nades, they just give a little bit too much away. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we, we definitely believe this is B as Config spots them both. A ton of damage, and now Farley's been spotted. They know he's in CT, and that th this should be it. There's no way Farley's going to be able to come back into this one. Shiro has the rotation covered. They know exactly where he is. The utility just keeps coming out. He's blind. He goes forward. He can't even find the first. That is going to be it. Ah! Naphany closing it out on Astralis' map pick of Ancient. 16 to 13. And the heroics from Glaive in the previous round is not enough to save his team. It kept them in it for one more round, but that's all it was. A single extra round for Astralis. The game itself... <laughs>